activity. So we came to current police station to look for help. We drove right into the station, but those two cars followed us right inside and forced me into their car, a white pro box. I was sandwiched between two men in civilian clothes. I was handcuffed and I was assaulted. They were demanding to know why I was resisting arrest. And I told them I was not resisting arrest, I was resisting criminals. I don't know who you are. You have not identified your, I, yourselves. And up to now, as far as I am concerned, you are criminals. They drove me down uh, Langata Road, up to near, I think around the turning of uh, Langata South Road, where they stopped, they made a few calls. I don't know to who, but they were, I gather they were talking to their superior. I could hear the muttering words about Alpha, Bravo, Sierra. I don't know what, the, what those mean. But I had the mention DIC headquarters. Then after some long conversations, they decided to turn back. Uh, we came with them. I was still handcuffed in the car. We stopped here, just across the road here, near, Shell near the Shell petrol station. That is the time they asked for my ID, and I gave it to them. They looked at it. They said, you're the Francis Macharia guy, though? I said, yes. One guy got out, made some phone calls, came back again, asked for my phone number. I refused to give it to him. They had previously asked for my phone also, which I did not have with me because I had left it with my son. Um, after another long telephone conversation, they came back and the guy sitting behind was asked to remove my handcuffs. Then they told me it was a case of mistaken identity and that I am free to go. They did not explain how it could be mistaken identity. They did not explain how they could have trailed me right from my home or near my home if it was indeed a case of mistaken identity. So as far as I was concerned, those were still criminals. Anyway, they brought me back to current police station from where they had abducted me in the first place and they went away. Um, they were telling me now I can go home. But I said, no, I am not going home. First, I will report an attempted abduction. This is a criminal offense. So I have already um, recorded an incident, reported a crime. It is in the occurrence book. Now I am waiting to write a statement. They have been telling me to go to DCI headquarters to report there, but I said no, the incident happened here within the prisons of current police station. So any statement I write, I will write it here at current police station. I got a call from the DC, from the OCD, OCPD Langata. She was telling me to go and uh, talk to her there. I said no, if she wants to talk to me, she can come here. Now she has told me that they are sending somebody from Langata, which is the mother police station for this area, to come and sit, take my statement. So that is what I am waiting for. Are you, are you convinced that uh, the intimidation that has happened to, to you today is connected to the work that you do, the, the articles that you've been writing? Certainly. As we have seen all these abductions, I am not the first media person to be abducted or to be arrested. It is clear that all these things are connected, that the police are operating outside the law. 
to arrest, intimidate, harass innocent uh, people. And on this, we must lay blame where it squarely lies. That is on the government of Kenya. On the National Police Service, on the Inspector General of the National Police Service, on the Director of DCI, and all the officers who are carrying out these rogue activities. And I think what I have to say is that we cannot sit back and allow Kenya to descend into a lawless state. And therefore, it is the duty of all who have been subjected to this, this kind of intimidation to follow up and to seek legal redress. How are you so, feeling after this awful experience? It is extremely <laughs> traumatizing. Because when you are abducted by unknown people who do not identify themselves, when I asked them to identify themselves or who they are, their response was that they have a Subaru. Therefore, I should know they are policemen and that they have guns. Therefore, they, I should know they are policemen. And I told them that, first of all, everybody can drive a Subaru. It is not a preserve of the police. Secondly, all the criminals we know have guns. Therefore, that is not an identity. They refuse to show their identity cards. And, and I think we, we cannot sit back and see our country go back into a police state. We fought for democracy. We achieved what we call democracy in 1991. We cannot go back to the era of dictatorship, to the era of a police state, to the era of rogue cops who abduct people left, right, and center, and even kill people and throw their bodies away wherever they throw them away. We were told there will be no more abductions by this government. There will be no more extrajudicial killings. <laughs> they are not showing that they meant it. Um, having problems with the law enforcers comes with the job. We call it hazards of the trade. I have, have, I have had my own share of uh, problems. But in the past when police have wanted to talk to me, they have called me and asked me whatever questions they wanted. I have never had to go through abduction, kidnapping by people who I do not know whether they are police or whether they are terrorists. And up to now, I don't know whether those are policemen or terrorists. We don't know. So we will be demanding a proper, proper accountability, a proper explanation from all those who are responsible and who claim that they are in charge of security in Kenya. Are you reading a pattern from what happened yesterday with the shooting of a journalist and now today? Is it something that you feel? Yesterday, like a journalist who was covering the protests in Nakuru was shot at close range by police officers. We have had many other cases of journalists being uh, mistreated and beaten. And I think just yesterday there were statements from Kenya Editors Guild, of which I am a member. There was a statement from KUJ. There was a statement from Association of Media Women in Kenya. There was a statement from Media Council of Kenya on the journalist who was shot. Obviously, those statements are not being taken seriously. So we must now seek um, remedy in the courts.
yeye yuko aje sasa hivi na ikizingatiwa kwamba ilifanyika ndani ya kituo cha polisi bali ambapo ni salama huko ndapo salama Andrew my son ako sawa he was very brave he was the one driving and managed to drive to drive me away right into the station he is also the one who managed to take a video of what was happening and also to share that video in various uh, let's say with my friends and family but obviously an 18 year old young man going through that seeing his father abducted in a very brutal violent fashion must be very traumatizing for him it is traumatizing for my other children who are all here who got the news and were wondering what is happening. It is traumatizing for my mom in Nyeri at the age of 90, 95, getting this news that her son has been abducted and she doesn't know by who. So it is traumatizing for everybody involved, not just me. For me, I call it hazards of the trade. But there are those young ones who depend on me, who love me. There are my elders, there are my siblings, there are my friends. All of them will be traumatized. Mr. Bebe, could you explain whether you believe the statement by these guys that they continue to another Francis Kaibo? And if you intend to sue... I do not believe that. That Francis guy, though, I am twice his age. <laughs> that Francis guy, though, does not live where I live because they trailed me from my house. That Francis guy, though, as far as I know, does not drive a car that resembles mine. They, it is me they were looking for. It is me they were trailing. Does this cow you? No, we cannot be cowed. I think we were there during the struggle against the one-party dictatorship. If we resisted Moi, who are these ones? Yes. I don't know if this would be allowed, but would it be possible to also hear from Andrew what he experienced? No. Okay. Let's allow you kindly to switch positions. So, so, uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, Zubeda, thanks for having you. We are dealing with a case of, uh, like, clearly there is a target of the media from yesterday to today. What's the statement coming from your side? Kwanza kabisa ni kitendo ambacho tunakilani pakubwa, kwa sababu umefikia wakati ambapo tunaona serikali haina heshima kwa vyombo vya habari. Na sio tu maash na pole sana kwa kile ambacho kimekufika hii leo. Inasikitisha sana kwamba kama wanahabari ya tunamani tena. Kazi yetu na ndio sponsor kazi ambayo tunaifanya inatambuliwa chini ya kipenge chini ya kipengee ambacho kinazungumza kuhusu haki za kimenadamu. Mbona media ikawa ndio peke yake imetambuliwa kwenye Bill of Rights? Ni kwa sababu taifa linatutegemea sisi kupata habari, kufahamishwa na tuna haki ya access to information. Lakini wakati ambapo tunataka kuwafahamisha wana, wananchi, tunakuwa kwamba sisi sasa ndio walengwa, tumekuwa adui. Mash amekuja katika kituo cha polisi ambapo anajihisi kwamba ni salama. Lakini kufikia wakati ambapo analengwa akiwa katika kituo cha polisi ni jambo la kusikitisha sana na ni jambo ambalo tunalikemea pakubwa sana. Kwa sababu tunajiuliza kama wa Kenya, tuko salama? Eh? Kwa sababu huwezi kusema ni mistake na identity. Masha ameeleza kabisa sana. Kwa sababu tunajiuliza kama wa Kenya, tuko salama? Eh? Kwa sababu huwezi kusema ni mistake na identity. Masha ameeleza kabisa. Hawaishi pamoja na the, the mash wenye wanasema kwamba wanamfuata wanaishi maeneo tofauti na ni kitu ambacho tumeona kumekuwa na msururu wa wanahabari kulengwa jana tumetoka tu kuzungumza kuhusu wanahabari aliyepigwa risasi wanahabari wetu wamelengwa na vitu za machozi wanahabari wetu sasa wamekuwa wao ndio wale wanaitwa criminals lugha ambayo inatumika katika nyanja za kisiasa we are not criminals kazi yetu ni kufahamisha mwananchi kile ambacho kinafanyika kazi, kazi yetu makosa yetu ni kubeba microphone na kamera ino kumfahamisha mwananchi kuhusu kile ambacho kinafanyika kina hatubebi bunduki hatubebi mawe hatubebi rungu kwa hivyo unapochukua risasi na kumpiga mwanahabari unapochukua pingu na kumjeruhi mwanahabari hata bila kumfahamisha kwa nini unamjeruhi ni, ni kusudi lako ni gani 
labda hawa polisi tuwakumbushe article 49 of the constitution sio kama wameisoma kuhusu haki za yule ambaye anakamatwa unastahili kumwendea umuulize sababu za kumkamata ni gani wakili yuko hapa atazungumza ni haki za kum, kwa, kwa yule mfu mnayemkamata mueleze kwa lugha ambayo anaielewa kwa nini unamkamata jitambulishe kwamba wewe ni nani na umueleze kwa sababu kusudi gani wewe unamkamata na nia ambayo uta, ama hatua ambazo utachukua baada ya kumkamata si kuweka mtu kwenye gari kama gunia hata kama ni criminal hata kama ni terrorist kila mkenya ana haki ambazo amewekewa na kuhakikishiwa kwenye katiba mshike kwa njia ya heshima mfikishe katika kituo cha polisi na umpe haki ya kuwa na wakili si kumbeba na kumdalilisha na kum, 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 kumuumiza kwa makosa ambayo hata mwenyewe hajui ni makosa gani kwa hivyo tangu maandamano yaliyopita tuliona wanahabari wetu wakijeruhiwa wakumbuka wale ambao walilengwa wakiwa katika ndani ya gari wanatumiwa vitu za machozi wengine wao they are still traumatized to death tumeshauriana na DCI tumeshauriana na DPP tumeshauriana na IG lakini nadhani namna ambavyo Masha amesema hapa statements hazitoshi itabidi sasa ni kama tumesukumwa ukutani wakitaka tuingie barabarani tutaingia na nadhani hapa ndio umefikia wakati kwamba sasa tutatoa notice seven days notice kama hakuna yeyote ambaye atachukuliwa hatua hatutakuwa na budi kuingia barabarani kwa sababu inaonekana hiyo ndio lugha ambayo serikali inaelewa kwa sababu umefika wakati ni kwamba ni, sijui nini kinachofichwa tunapoeleza mwananchi ambacho kinaendelea wanaogopa nini kama kweli haki inatendeka kama kweli mambo yanafanyika jinsi ambavyo inastahili uoga wao ni wanini eh hatutakubali vyombo vya habari kudhalilishwa na kuhujumiwa namna ambavyo inaendelea ule wakati mwingine walisema mkichapisha taarifa fulani hatutawapatia matangazo kila wakati ni vitisho vitisho mkiangazia kile ambacho kinaendelea tutawazima tuna haki kama vyombo vya habari kuangazia kile ambacho kinaendelea humo nchini na kumfahamisha mwananchi kuhusu kile ambacho kinaendelea humo nchini na hatutasita na hatutakoma na hatutatishwa tutaendelea kufanya kazi yetu kwa sababu ni, ni haki yetu kumfahamisha mwananchi na kuhakikisha kwamba anajua kile ambacho kinaendelea inaumiza sana inaumiza sana na hiyo kauli kusema oh mistaken identity wako wapi waje hapo watuambie kwamba ilikuwa mistaken identity nani hamjui mash aliingia kwenye sekta ya wanahabari kabla yangu na wakati niliingia nilimjua mash ni nani hawezi kutudanganya kwamba oh mistaken identity hawajui mash anakaa vipi hata kama ni mistaken identity mash is not a criminal kwamba mnamshika na kumrusha kama kama gunia na tunakemea kabisa na poleni sana kwa familia bila shaka ni swala ambalo hatutaliatia hapa tutalifuata hadi tamati jana tumetuma statement lakini imekuwa statement zetu ni kama wameamua sasa ni za kufunga nyama ah wacha waropoko hakuna kitu watafanya lakini sasa tunataka kusema umefika mwisho sg okay so we are here to show solidarity with uh, masharia who is our senior in the industry and uh, first of all we condemn what happened uh, today and uh, that is uh, just uh, a way of intimidating journalists so that they should not uh, report what is going on in the country and just to tell the people who sent uh, these uh, abductors is to know that actually we are going to be louder we are actually going to be more bold so that we are able to inform the country what is going on if they think that by intimidating journalists they are going to enforce information darkness we must warn them that actually we are going to be louder and uh, we have to assure Kenyans that despite all these intimidations we are going to give Kenyans credible and reliable information from what is happening in the country we saw this happening last year during the protest where the media was uh, targeted and even journalists were targeted individually so that they can scare us from uh, reporting what is going on we can uh, we can only send a notice to them and also to journalists from wherever they are please go out with your tools of trade let us expose what is going on if kenyans are being killed if kenyans are being abducted please come out and say it as it is don't be intimidated we know yesterday a journalist was shot in a nakuru three uh, rubber bullets targeting her uh-huh. and that is not by mistake and i don't buy this story of uh, mistaken identity of masharia that's what we call stories ajaba and we can't tell the dci that uh, we are intelligent enough we know what is going on 
for you to uh, go for Mashara, that means you profiled him, you've trailed him, you've had all the information about him, and therefore you cannot lie to us. Please try to lie to someone else, but not to the media. We are intelligent enough. We know that this is a, 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 we are treating this as a case of abduction, and it will go down in our history that in 2024, a journalist was abducted in, a, in Nairobi. So that is what we are sending out. And like the president of Keg has said, Journalists to be on the standby, we are consulting and we'll be issuing a notice, even if it means that we'll also do our peaceful protest, we will announce that and we'll choose a day so that again we are not infiltrated and people don't take advantage of our peaceful protest to destroy property and to loot, but we will also announce a nationwide protest like we did in 2014 when we said enough is enough and this time around again we'll say enough is enough. Uh, it's quite a dark day that I've been summoned to leave the funeral service of the learned judge Majanja who died to come and deal with a question of an illegality being committed by state agency. I have now full instructions from uh, all the stakeholders in the media industry to pursue this matter legally. First, the circular of uh, the Director of Public Prosecution rests the responsibility of uh, investigate police abuse, police misbehavior on the office of the IPOR. From here, we shall record a statement, a complaint at IPOR, because that is the constitutional office allowed to deal with this matter. After that, we shall institute a suit to compel IPOA and the National Police Service Commission to interdict the police officers who are involved in the act that has been committed to one of the journalists, a prominent journalist, a name in the industry that anybody cannot claim that they do not know him, that they went for him with a mistaken identity. Two, the law, the police standing orders, the criminal procedure court provides for the manner in which a suspect is supposed to be arrested. Nobody is saying Masharia Gaido cannot commit a crime. He can commit a crime. He's not above the law, but the law must be applied when arresting him when charging him, when arraigning him before a police cell for him to be transmitted to court. So we shall be moving very swiftly today to implement the two legal instruments available for the citizens of this country. Third, this is not an isolated event. This is not an event that anybody can say that it was a mistaken identity. For the DCI to trail serious data has been analyzed, profiling has been done, risks have been assessed, timing has been agreed, and how to execute that matter. My good friend here tells me he was living at home. And as they were driving out of the home, suspicious vehicles started trailing him. So as they were trailing him, they knew who they were trailing. They were not trailing a ghost. He immediately sensed being a veteran journalist and instructed the driver to rush to the nearest police station. The speed of the car and the expertise of the driver and the instinct of Masharia saved him. Had he been intercepted before he reached at the police station, the destination could be either quarry, dumping site, could be anywhere where nobody knows. Still the trailers had the audacity to come to the police station and manhandle Mashara Gaidu. If you can see, these are injuries. 
this is what the law says that torture was banned in this country. This is what was said that the police will only be allowed to use reasonable force if the person being arrested resists. Masharia Gaido was within the police station, within the police premises. Why on earth will anybody want to do this to us? We shall be seeking that these cannot be police officers. This must be extrajudicial uh, people appointed to execute illegal orders. And we shall move very fast to get the perpetrators of such an, uh, a crime outside. What would happen to an ordinary Kenyan unknown whose face is not known in this country if it can be done to a senior media personality to this? Is this an isolated attack on the freedom of the journalism, the freedom, the freedom of the media? It is not. It is a well choreographed attack, systematic attack to make sure that the media does not discharge their mandate. The fourth estate is protected by the constitution of this country. It is protected by the statutory provisions of this country and we shall be calling upon the new direct, the new, the new acting DIG to take charge of his people and they operate within the law. Otherwise, the media cannot stop from discharging its mandate. Remember, the media never causes news. It reports news. They are a messenger. They can only report what has happened. They do not create news. So if anybody is aggrieved with the manner the media is relaying the messages that are being in real time, it's too late. The media will discharge its mandate today, tomorrow, yesterday, and for all the time that the country is a democratically uh, uh, country that is gov being governed by the country. So on notice of this, I pour, we shall be in your offices shortly to put the statement so that we record that statement and we expect by close of business today the perpetrators will have been arrested and have been the file being forwarded to the director of public prosecution for the singular purpose to prosecute. This is a matter of great public interest. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get a closer from uh,